take our baggage from the past and bring it into our future, bring it into our now. Why do we get stressed out about things that have not happened yet? But why do we allow our past to dictate our present moment when everything we have is right now? We only have this second. And so we can think of uh, trauma, past experiences that make us kind of like, oh, I hate that that happened to me. And, you know, we, we dwell on the, on that past and bring it into our current life, creating a worse set of circumstances for our present. And then we worry about the future. But how many times have we all worried about the future and that future that we were worrying about never happened? So we're creating a, a stressful environment for ourselves out of something that happened a long time ago or something that has not happened to us and probably won't happen to us in the future. It's a pretty interesting question. I think about it all the time, especially if I get uh, depressed over something that has happened in the past or I've had last month uh, bad days of trading or whatever. And then I think about the future and I go, oh God, I know their food shortage is coming. I, I know that we're having, um, what's gas prices? What are they gonna be next month? How are, how are we gonna make it? But a lot of times what we worry about never happens. And I know Gil, me and you've had this conversation a few times. And so really the question is, how do you enjoy the moment you're in right now? How do you forget about what's happening in the future? How do you, not allow the past to bother you? And how do you just love this moment right now? Like this place right now is full of friends and family. And why would we allow our past to interfere with this good group of friends and family? We're probably gonna play games and have a good time today, like we always do. So why would we allow other things to disturb that? I think it's a foolish notion that we as humans try to live in other moments besides the present. And I sure would like your uh, your discussion on that, Gil. Thank you. Well, yeah, this is, again, it's a very, very important uh, subject to, to understand. Uh, I would start with saying there is a loop, and as you've described very simply and clearly, there is a loop going on here. And the loop is within time space. And this is the realm of perception of the five senses where humanity is revolving around. And so um, living in the present moment is easier said than done for a human being because we are programmed that way. And there is an automation in us. It's in our ego mind, which is a creature of survival, which is a creature of time and space. and it is creating a loop that disconnects us from the present moment. The present moment is where we dig deeper into a deeper realm of consciousness, of energy, that goes beyond time and space. This is the present moment, the ever-expanding present moment. Um, to be able to live and enjoy the moment is, again, coming to a practice. It's coming to a practice that raises awareness. First and foremost, we have to admit and acknowledge that we are living in a loop, that we're programmed that way by our social indoctrinations and system. And there is a force that wants us to stay in that realm because then we are easily controlled. So now, without pointing fingers, this is all happening within our consciousness. This journey is a journey of consciousness. The fragmented consciousness within time space is living in memories from the past through which it creates and necessities into the future. And there is always a back and forth comparing things to the past and being worried about the future, which takes you and bumps you off from the present moment. Very tricky business. In the present moment, everything occurs. Everything is surging. Everything is emerging from the core. And so this is a part of raising awareness, studying about that program, and coming up with ways to practice and to deprogramming ourselves from that. Now the question is coming, 
are we, if we deprogram, that means that we're not going to be in time space? No, we're going to be in time space, as much as we're also in timelessness, but time space will transform there. It becomes a different medium. It becomes a medium through which we can express our now moment and re-sculpt time space into a higher and deeper level of expression through which we are not going to react to, to memories anymore. Even though we will remember everything, past and future, but we're no longer going to be in the loop of emotional reaction to past experiences, especially traumatic past experiences, which creates tremendous fear. And to understand that there, there is a whole industry of fear in this world. I like how you say a whole industry of fear because that is absolutely right. It's easy to sell magazines, newspapers, to watch the news if everybody is in fear. But the past also has a lot of important things. You know, like I got my buddy Matt here, and when I think about the past with him, we crack up laughing, we have a good time. Those past, and we bring those past moments into our now. I do the same thing with my brother. We laugh about our travels around the world. And then we bring past experiences into our present and we enjoy them again. We relive those positive, good moments again. I think uh, the ultimate question is, how do we, how do we prevent and just sidestep the negative emotions and the negative things that we get triggered by just to allow those to pass on by? Kind of like what we were talking about the other day is, you know, people get upset just real instantly because of some kind of trauma that's happened in their life. And we've all done this. So instead of getting upset, realizing, hey, I'm in the now. I'm not in way back there. I don't need to let that bother me today. And if I want to laugh and joke, then I can just change. I can flip the switches inside of me. You just have to learn how to do it. Just practice doing it. If I want to uh, think of wonderful childhood memories that make up my life, well, I'll think about my old buddy Matt. We'll just start cracking up, have a cocktail, smoke a stogie, and just really uh, you know, live it up. But that's really difficult. It's uh, not easy for people to recognize, oh, wow, I just exploded. I just got mad real fast. No reason. Oh, they just said something that's so repulsive. I just, I got to close my mind off. We've all done it a bunch of times. So the the real thing is being aware, being aware of what you're doing in the present. And that takes a lot of practice. I think Gil said something really interesting and said it best that a lot of people don't think about that the now is very turbulent. You have the ups and downs of everything that goes on in a day. If you think about what is a perfect day, oh, everything goes right. But that's not really a perfect day. Sometimes the lows of the day make the highs of the day that much better. But you can't see all those things when you're in that moment. Sometimes you have to take a step back. Like when you just mentioned that, oh, somebody said something that upset me really bad. Well, maybe you can just take a step back and say, all right, well, I'm going to focus on that later and see why did that make me upset? What were those emotions with inside me? I think most people just fire off and get angry because they don't look at their life from their own perspective. They look at, oh, that person was trying to make me mad. But why did that make me mad? They don't explore what actually made them mad about the entire situation. It was that person that made me mad. They were trying to make me mad. Well, they're out to get me. They're out to do this. I'm all, you know, the victim card is so popular right now. But nobody really knows what that means. They don't look inside their own life. So when you're living in the moment, it's important to take all the context from your life in the past and in the present to really see. And first, I think you even have to know who you are to even make any of these decisions. I don't think most people try to even take that into context. It's a very good point. Yes. Um, what is escaping our awareness is actually that... Um, consciousness, that intelligence in us, that is processing every experience in a state of wholeness, in a state of oneness, in a state of nowness and hereness. There is another creature in us, which is a surviving creature, that is processing every experience in separation. 
So we have, we are in a sense, we're in a superposition. We have a quantum self that is always living in the now and processing every experience in nowness, and therefore is, doesn't have hang-ups. It doesn't have accumulated layers from past memories. It's not a trauma for that entity. For that entity, everything immediately is refined into wisdom and it is added to the repository of wisdom of the entity, the complete entity. However, we have the surviving entity here, the human, the ego, the body, which processing everything in separation, in duality. This creature is accumulating density, is accumulating past experiences that for it, from its memory and processing, it is traumatic, it is fearful. And so there is always potentials that this creature, and it is a vigilante, it's really a creature that wants to protect us. It's a creature that's constantly practicing self-defense because it sees, oh, there's going to be an attack. I'm going to be attacked by, some, by something. I've been there before. I know how it leads to that because I have that memory. That's the projection reflection of past and future loop. And it bumps off the creature that is living in the center that is processing everything in nowness and immediately puts it into the repository of wisdom for the entity to enjoy. The human now, where we're entering right now, is to the new era where this entity and that entity are beginning to come together. There is a bridge, there is a portal for every individual. And this is, for me, one of the key responsibilities that we have as individuals to be able to open those portals and to reveal those bridgeways so we can bring the soul, however you want to call it. Call it higher intelligence, call it God, call it spirit. These are just titles. It's not important. What's important is how do you develop the relationship within yourself? How do you meditate and mediate through meditation between the entity that is complete, that is free, that is immortal and eternal, the soul? and between the entity that is temporary, that is mortal, and therefore is constantly afraid for its survival. There is a fusion occurring right now, and that's the alchemy of consciousness, that humanity will begin to develop more and more awareness and skill as we go into the new era. Life is catalyzing us to that. I like how you say that, uh, talking about the survival instinct, because a lot of our experience allows us to avoid different pitfalls. But that doesn't mean that we have to live in the past. We can say, well, I've been in a bunch of different business deals in my life, so I know that uh, about half of the people are just really bad. So I'm just not going to do any more business deals because I know a lot of people are bad. Yeah, I'm just going to be a little bit more cautious. I'm not going to let that, those past experiences negate or thwart my future expansion, whether it is business, personal, whatever. I think we can say the same thing for uh, love and romance. I mean, how many times have uh, most of us thought, well, I am never going to get married again. I'm never going to have another girlfriend or boyfriend. Uh, uh, men suck. Women suck. You know, I can't stand being around. Oh, God. I'm just going to use them to you know, have a physical pleasure. I'm going to use them to you know, maybe somebody will buy me dinner. Uh, because of our past experience. So our past experience is dictating to us how we live our life right now. And we're closing doors all around us. So we're in a steady progression of closing doors and only giving ourselves this little bitty hallway to go walk down because we just keep slamming doors. And, and then that could be a real big problem, and it is a problem for a lot of people because we're allowing our past to dictate how our future is going to be in the now. That's, that's for certain. And there are a lot of people that are really good about forgetting, uh, or not forgetting about their past, but covering it up. I have some really good friends that refuse to have any sort of serious, uh, like, deep discussions because they would uh, rather laugh and joke. I'm not really calling out my buddy Matt over here, but it's a, uh, 
in some way. Yeah, but, but it, it's really uh, true in that a lot of uh, friends that you have great memories with, well, they want to repeat those patterns, which is fine and good and healthy. But you stay in the, you, all the other doors are closed. You just only stay in this one paradigm. A lot of times if you had conflict with somebody in the past, all of a sudden you slam all, all the doors around you, you want to stay in conflict because you don't trust them. But you don't know who they are now. They may be different. They may be the same. You don't know. Everybody changes. Everybody evolves. I'm not the same person I was last year. I'm not the same person I was last week for that matter. Uh, so it's a, it's a, it's interesting to think how we limit ourselves by our past. And I, I would like, personally, and I've been striving toward this a lot, to be aware of myself in the moment. Each moment. I'll catch myself going, oh, God, I really need to worry about this. But I don't need to worry about that. I just need to worry about right now. I do my preparations. Everything has a time and place. So I, I prepare for any eventuality, which I just think is smart, but I don't have to worry about it. It's kind of like a buddy of mine said um, that came to visit recently. He carried around this little bitty baton. It was a collapsible baton. He felt safer with it. He'd been practicing with it. He thought that if something happened to him and his wife or his family while they're out in public, anywhere in a bad spot, he could whack somebody real quick and he would protect his family. And some people go, well, you're really dwelling on that. You're creating and manifesting your own future because you are doing that. And I would have to say no, because I often, and more often than not, carry my two little corrupt knives on me when I go out in public and I know how to use them. And if I pull them out, that means there's probably some trouble. But I don't sit there and dwell on it. I don't manifest somebody to come rob me. It's just, hey, there is that probability. I do practice with them. I do know how to use them. But I don't think about it. I don't have to let uh, all of my training or, or other physical assaults make me afraid of going out to dinner with my wife. I don't have to think that, uh, well, I don't think this has ever happened, but I can't say that, you know, oh, Trey hurt my feelings, so I don't want to see my brother anymore. You know, that would just be stupid. You know, we do a lot of stupid things as humans. And, and to be aware of those things and put ourselves in check and go, hey, I'm allowing my ex-girlfriend over here to prevent me from having a better and healthier relationship right now with this person that I care about. Be like, you know, my daddy beat me and you kind of look like my daddy, so I probably don't want to be your friend. Because you remind me of, you know, my daddy who's a butthole. That's, none of that's true. But uh, that's how people, uh, I've seen it. I mean, my dad might be a butthole sometimes, but. That, <laughs> yeah. Not, not only that we've seen it, we have all took part in it, you know, and, and that's how we learn. That's how we learn. But we begin to recognize wisdom. Wisdom is to begin to recognize patterns that are repeating themselves until you recognize there is, that, that there is a self-sabotage going on here. That you actually have to dig deeper into your resources, into your faculties, into your inner technologies, be it mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically, and start to shift and turn things around. Because insanity was, I believe it was Albert Einstein that said, insanity is repeating the same patterns, expecting different results. How would we expect different results if we keep repeating the same patterns? Now, that's a tricky business because most of those patterns are going unconscious because we live in denial. It's automation. This is constantly running in our mind and we have emotional reactions to it which creates biochemical processes that fires all of that in our brain and in our bloodstream and in our hormonal system. And here we are repeating the same pattern in a different mask and we're wondering, how did I bring it on myself again? I thought I was over it already. Well, you're not over it until you break through the pattern. But to break through the pattern, you have to start to go deep within and create your round table 
and start to sit down all of your elements and all of your aspects and all of your fragments and start to create an inner integration, to create inner coherence. And through that inner coherence, you can start to feed your mind with the right nutrients, with the emotional intelligence necessary, which is an emotional intelligence that comes from the deeper heart, not from the shallow heart, not the emotions that are under the list of fear, but the emotions that are under the list of love, that comes with compassion, with understanding, with forgiveness, with allowance, with humbleness, to learn, to study, to go deeper, to understand that if we are not bringing new intelligences, if we're not bringing new concepts, breaking through patterns, really looking, admitting, confessing to ourselves first, and then to one another, but also learn to forgive, to understand and to forgive the shortcomings and the limitations of our humanity. We all have that. But on the other hand, we have an entity inside us, each and every one of us equally, with no exception. We have an entity that is observing all of it. And it is quiet like a deep ocean. And it is always present. And it draws every experience, it draws the nectar, and the nectar is emotion, again. Very important. Pay attention to the system, because the system will suppress emotions. It will tell you, don't, not, don't get too emotional. Be strong. Understand what you need to do, and just go ahead and do that. Be tough. But what it does is, it also cuts off the portal into authentic, original emotions that are derivatives of love. And what we have is, again, a system that is an industry that feeds off of fear. And it will surely create a system to where there is a systematic, constant ripples of fear. There is always a problem that has to happen. There is a reaction to the problem. And then we must find solutions. And who is the one who will bring the solutions? Who is going to be the savior? It can only be you. Uh, we are our own savior. We are our own guru. We are our own everything. But only if you take the time to go deep within yourself, like Phil's saying, and you get to understand that we all have all these personalities in us. We're all this shattered consciousness. And when you start taking the pieces and trying to put them together, Think of that mirror, it's a shattered little piece of you here, here, and here. Same thing with your round table. We get all those people together and you talk with all your personalities yourself. You put your whole mirror back together and assemble and really start to see who you are. Then you can understand that this fear mongering over here, well, that's only meant to control the people that haven't went into their deeper self. That's meant to control the people that don't know who they are. And if you don't know who you are, it's easy to be controlled. If you know who you are and you're strong and independent in your thinking and you can rely on yourself and you can always go back to you, you're going to be much harder to control. So it's going to create a better society and civilization when you have more and more of these people understanding to first go with the inside us, to understand what our own problems are, to understand what our trauma, emotions, all the things in the past, where they come from, what, were I, what was I going through in those past relationships? What was different in my environment that is different now? All those things can't be discounted. You think, oh, well, this person did me wrong, so what do we have to do to fix these problems? Well, what was I going through? What was going on in my life at that time? Was I having money struggles? Was that part of it? Was this going wrong? Was that going wrong? And you can't take those emotions into your new relationship because that person might have done something to do you wrong. But then also think about all the things that you did to that person and you did to yourself. And if you can just cut those things out that you did to yourself and did to the other person in your new relationship, then you can be much more happy and productive. But first you have to know and understand first that there's a problem and then you have to try to fix it. And where do you fix the problem? You fix it at the source and the source is inside you. I really like that a lot, Mr. Schmidt, because if we are, it's kind of like whenever you think about, uh, and I'll just throw my buddy uh, Matt in, in on this, because I, I think this, I, I'm talking for him because I think this is how he is. And so I'm making a judgment. I, I think he is, uh, he's the kind of guy that, like, well, I, I'd really like to hang around a, uh, uh, I'd really
really like to have a girl, and I really like them, and uh, or maybe I don't ever want to get serious because, uh, you know, I'm fearful, I'm fearful of loss, I'm fearful of, and I don't think that it's just a loneliness, I think the majority of people are, but it's fun just to call them out. So you think, uh, well, I don't want to be serious because it, it, it's painful. So, well, talking about that, and, and yeah, of course, I mean, you get married once, and of course, everybody's different. My, mine was that I traveled a lot. Me and you both, uh, from kindergarten through college, went to 23 different schools. I've never stayed in one place long enough for over a year and a half for work. So, it wasn't about me losing, it was about making the choice. Either I could stay home and have a relationship with someone, or I can continue to do what I do, travel the world and go and see and do whatever. And when I'm ready, I'll get to that point. And that's what happened two months ago. I got to a point where it's like, I'm going to stay at home. I don't want to work anymore. You know, kind of right. travel and stuff like that. I want to be, I want to be stable. So I think uh, that's why I'm trying to, to head that way now. And talk about worrying. Yeah, I worry about a lot of stuff. You know, where's my income coming? Where, is, where am I going to get this? Or what am I going to do about this? Or, you know, but Brent Mullen says, it's like, worry is like a rocking chair. You just something to do, but you don't go anywhere. You just sit like toy. Yeah, that's a great quote. You know, but, you know, also talking about some of the things, me and my kids, when they were growing up, every day I talked to them. And I was like, all right, what was your high and your low today? What was your best thing you, that happened to you today? And they'd tell me what happened. And I said, all right, what was your low? And it wasn't bad. He goes, the, the, the good always outdid the bad. And so we did that daily. So I think that's what you kind of you know, look on and take that from, you know, monthly. And say, my high this month was this, my low was that, but I took care of that. I think the one, one of the reasons why we have uh, been lifelong friends is because we have had an un, uh, unstated awareness of, of the now. Like we have never sat around in our 50 years together and complained. We've never sat around and bitched about things. We've never sat around and, oh, woe is me. Oh, man, woe is you. Oh, God. Yeah, there's never been any of that. There's uh, only been, what are we, what are we going to do to make this now a good now? And that's probably one of the underlying reasons for a lifelong friendship, because we both had that philosophy and kid-like personality that we always wanted to be kid-like without ever even talking about it. And I think that's what's missing a lot, too, in the entire world is you get to be an adult and all of a sudden everybody thinks you got to be serious. You got to, you can't laugh. You can't go out and do something fun. You, you can't be goofy. Oh, what are they going to think about me? Uh, well, I'm in my now. I'm living my now. If you don't like my now, you can go live your now over there. Yeah, go live. Yeah, you, you can go your... My now is good. I like my now. And it's a good practice every time that, especially lately over the past six months, if I start to get a little worried about things in, in my life or the outside circumstances of what's going on in the world, I had to go, and, and I did it with Jill uh, yesterday or the day before. I was like, hey, we're in this now, right now. What is a better now than right now? This is a great now. And that is just how we should live and practice life on a regular basis. Like, oh, wow, I'm really stressed about what's going to happen later, but I'm right now. I'm in this moment. I can't dictate what that other moment's going to be, but I can dictate this right now. By God, I'm gonna be a, a happy kid the best I can. And if you don't like it, you can go be a sad kid over there. You cannot be in, invited to our happy kids table. <laughs> go over there. I mean, who wants to eat at the adults that are complaining yeah. about gas prices? Let's go over here. Let's go over here. I want to sit at the kids table. Yeah. Well, and I think that's funny. And when you talk about separation in the now. It, that is a big separation. We're taught separation from everything, separation in classes and color and 
uh, everything. And, it, and as you, one of the first things you're taught as a kid, or at least in this part of the country in our culture, is uh, y'all go sit at the kids' table. The adults are going to be at the adult table. I never really understood that, especially as I got older. I didn't understand that. I'm thinking I want the kids to be over here at this table. I want to be over there with the, the kids' table. You adults have have warped your sense of reality and, and I don't particularly like it so I'd rather go over there with the kids <laughs> they're still they're still laughing and and they can cry for a second when somebody takes their toy away but then they forget about it a few minutes later and then everything's good again they don't sit and pout the whole day like uh, most adults do so I just think that's a fantastic uh, thing and I really have enjoyed this conversation uh, Gil do you have anything else you would like to add uh, perhaps uh, you know, it, to because we were talking about being in the moment, and you know, it's it's easier said than done. So, what can we suggest for those who actually wants to practice that, so they can take it into their lives and practice it and see some results? Uh, if you just allow yourself a moment, and you can do it right where you are, you can do it with your eyes closed, or you can do it with your eyes open. And just take a deep breath into your heart. But focus on your heart center. And begin to breathe into your heart. You can take deep breaths, inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. And allow yourself to feel the presence of your heart. This is, the heart is the hub. The heart is the center of our body, right here. But this heart, this physical heart that pumps blood to the entire body and, pl and to the brain has an energetic equivalent, deeper, much deeper, higher and wider than that. It emanates a field, electromagnetic field, that even science today has proven that is 50 times more potent than the field that the brain emits. There must be a reason for that. So if you sit in your heart and you breathe into your heart, Breath connects you with the now moment. Because you never say, oh, you know, I breathed yesterday and it was fun. <laughs> and maybe tomorrow I'll breathe again and we'll see what happens with that breath, you know. Uh, you never say that. You can say a lot of other things about what you've done and what you're planning to do, but you will never say that about the breath because you're breathing right here, right now. Because if you don't, there is no yesterday or tomorrow for you. So breath is a connector, but to breathe and to also centralize yourself in the heart area. And when you breathe into the heart, to just allow yourself to feel the presence of that heart and to feel the emanations of your breath and how it ripples into space. And if you practice it and allow yourself to listen to the silence of that moment as you breathe and only allow the sound of your breath to become really dominant in your sens sensorial system. At some point, a new space is going to open unto you. And it's going to be a space that has a very deep depth to it and a very high and very wide. And you're going to sit right here with your breath. And that's when you're connecting with the present moment. And in that space, you will see that you will not have worries about the future or complainings about the past. You are now in the moment. You're in your breath. And when you're in your breath, the breath is always happening right here, right now. It's life. It's life. So now you're in your portal with life, but not life as a form that did this in the past and maybe we'll do that in the future. No, life as a presence. And this is when you start to connect with the force of life. And that's what I wanted to add. Well, that was a nice addition. And uh, I don't know if anybody else wants to add anything, but I do want to add something to you people that live locally. Every six weeks, we're going to be having a new event at the farm. So please go visit our website on a regular basis, our Facebook because we have uh, all sorts of fun stuff from paint days to how to make toothpaste, how to grow your own food, 
how to build water catchment systems, how to just do everything to survive and thrive and just learn how to be a better person. And that's what we do every day, all day, the best we can. So keep that in mind and go visit us if you live locally. You can come out and see us on Sundays at 1.30. Uh, Mr. Schmidt. Hope everybody enjoyed the conversation. You can catch us on all the major media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all the alternatives, and hope everybody enjoyed it. Have a good day.